Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifics where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Have you ever wondered how the ability to speak and create languages came about in human beings? Every species makes sounds but humans are unique because we are able to speak in complex languages and learn multiple languages too. Scientists in the US have now proposed that there is one particular protein in the gene NOVA1 that could be responsible for Homo sapiens being able to communicate in languages. How did they arrive at this conclusion? Well, scientists noticed that the NOVA1 gene is present in all mammals and it's very useful for neural development. But unlike other mammals and even unlike ancient humans, the NOVA1 gene in modern humans has one different protein variant. It's called I197V. This minuscule variant, when transplanted into mice by the scientists, made changes to their vocalization. So the mice were observed as talking differently to their females and there were speech pattern changes noticed in how baby mice talk to their mothers. Now there needs to be a lot more research done to fully confirm if it is this I197V variant in the NOVA1 gene that is responsible for the human ability to construct and speak languages. The next step of the scientists would be to see if the variant has any effect on language development or language disorders in human beings. But it's still a milestone. The next story has both bad and good news for chocolate lovers. The bad news is that in the wake of climate change, cocoa production across the world is under threat. The good news is that scientists have solutions in place. Cocoa, a plant that sustains a $100 billion chocolate industry annually, is a major cash crop. But its production in countries like Brazil, Ghana and Indonesia is threatened by extreme weather events, rising temperatures and lower pollination rates. This is why scientists from the University of Oxford conducted a study in these countries and understood what is the reason for lower cocoa production. But they also provided solutions such as increasing natural pollination rates through insects like midges and thrips, preserving the soil organic matter and practicing climate resilient agriculture. These are small steps that could lead to long term safety for the world's beloved chocolates. Our next story is a new paper in the Astrophysical Journal Letters which talks about how the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A which is in the middle of the Milky Way is constantly emitting flares of light. In fact, a press release said that the black hole seems to be having a wild wonderful party in the middle of our galaxy. This is the first time ever that we've gotten the longest and most detailed view of the black hole using the James Webb Space Telescope. And what the scientists have observed is quite literally out of this world. While large black holes are usually expected to emit flares of light, this is the first we've seen of a black hole that has constant activity. Some of these infrared flares of light are very bright, while the others are a bit moderate, but they are constantly being emitted with no end and also no real pattern in sight either. Through these observations, scientists hope to uncover more information about the void that is at the center of our universe. The next goal for them would be to observe Sagittarius A continually for 24 hours. Finally, for the first time ever, a study has documented the effects of pesticides on fungi, microbes, plants, insects, fish and basically all kinds of living beings in water and in soil. The study, published in Nature Communications Journal, analyzed 1700 lab and field samples to understand exactly how pesticides affect the environment of a place. They found that pesticides of all kind, insecticides, herbicides or fungicides affect the growth reproduction, cellular growth and metabolism of 800 different species. And these are all the non-target species of the pesticides, meaning that these effects are unintentional. This makes pesticides all the more dangerous and the authors of the study point towards that. They warn against the current pesticide usage in industrialized agriculture, saying that the harm it causes to the ecosystem might be irreversible after a point. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning into The Print.